So from representing Bangladesh in three international robotics competitions to building robots for space explorations funded by NASA during his PhD program in Nebraska, to working for Tesla as a robotics engineer in Silicon Valley, our guest, Mamor Hossein, talks about his journey in this talk. Mamor, thank you very much for joining us today. Let's start off with your education and your journey to becoming a robotics engineer. Well, first off, thank you very much for inviting me in this talk. So it all started actually even before my undergraduate. I did my undergraduate degree in mechanical engineering from Bangladesh. So my university was Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology. Uh, when, when two of my seniors in the university, they inquired about what was the possibility of joining an international robotics competition. Like Bangladesh had never performed in any of these kind of competitions back then. Because I found that, wow, this is going to be such a cool thing to actually build robots and getting out of the books. Like we started making robots, going to international competitions, and we represented our country and university in three consecutive years in uh, Beijing, China in 2005, and then 2006 in Malaysia, 2007 in Vietnam. And we learned so much out of making things for real and competing against some of the really cool and smart guys who were making robots. From there, I moved to United States, uh, University of Nebraska-Lincoln. I chose the university because of its good program in robotics. I asked my professor that, what's up for my PhD studies? Is there any robotics project that I can work on? So he had two projects in hand. One was the continuation of the master's. Another one was space robotics. So that was funded by NASA Johnson Space Flight Center. And they wanted to make robots, like modular robots, you can send to some other planet, like in Mars. And those robots can form different teams by connecting with each other and perform multiple tasks in that way. That's what I worked on for my PhD thesis. And after I completed, I moved to Silicon Valley to try to start a startup company. Ultimately, we didn't succeed, but overall, the amount of things we learned was just so much. So it was worth going for that attempt. After that, actually, I got into Tesla as a robotics engineer. And over there, I learned a lot about industrial robotics. Yeah, quite an interesting and inspiring journey, Mamor. So now, can you tell us more about the work you did at Tesla? I understand that you may have some limitations on what you can say, but please just share with us as much as you can. Yeah, so Tesla was very interesting and many of you probably know about Elon and how intense he can be. And we got the first-hand experience of that while working for him. So I was very excited to get letters signed by Elon that come to Tesla and so on. It was completely new experience for me to work on such a huge industrial robotic systems and automation systems. So far, what I've worked with were mostly experimental small systems, but not a high volume manufacturing system. So it was very overwhelming in the first several months. Tesla uses two main types of industrial robots in their body in white. So body in white is where the car body gets built. So basically it comes as a sheet metal from the supplier and it gets out of the roll and gets to the stamping facility. And after stamping, it comes to body in white, which was my department. And that's where you get all these stamped metal parts and you actually join the metals based on the design of the car, car body. So we were making the car body and after our operation, the car body would be complete in terms of the metal structure and you would send it out to uh, the paint shop. So it would get painted and then goes to the general assembly to attach all the transmission, motor, battery, all these things and finally spits out as a product, as a full car, full on car. So our part was in the body making uh, shop. So over there, yeah, we were using two main types of robots, fan robots and KUKA robots. So those are both articulated like six degree of freedom, most of the cases. 
robots and they are connected with the PLC systems. And so basically what happens is that the part or parts, they come in the station and then the robots pick up the parts and it goes to another station where the another robot probably applies some joining technique on it. Like it can be glue, it can be spot welding or arc welding, riveting. It's a lot of different techniques it applies to join the parts together and then it actually outputs this part from another side of the line and it continues until the entire car body is made. So Mahmoud, did you ever get to see or meet Elon Musk in person? If so, what's it like in person? In a couple of general meetings, got to see Elon Musk and yeah, he was uh, really interesting, but our managers told us that ah, better don't be in front of him because when he comes to the shop, maybe he is looking for something that went wrong terribly. So he <laughs> might hear some things that we were very careful about being around him kind of, but he was a real nice guy and very smart guy. Everyone said, and it was a great experience to work in his company. Yeah, he's a smart for sure. No doubt about it. All right. So now let's switch gears and talk about robotics engineering. So Mamur, I know you did, you did your undergrad and grad programs, both in mechanical engineering, but is mechanical engineering the only major someone can choose to become a robotics engineer? What I've found so far is mechanical, electrical, and computer engineering. These three are the most prevalent where if you study this, then you can actually get to the general field of robotics where you can apply it in many different fields eventually. So mechanical, electrical, and computer engineering slash computer science. Uh, so Mamur, based on your experience, what are the programming languages used in the robotics industry? Like something like C, C++ is very basic programming language and very ubiquitous so you can use it in just so many fields python is another good scripting language to know but yeah definitely c++ is a very versatile language and you might think that you might hear a lot more about python these days compared to c or c++ but c++ is actually something which is very very powerful so python is very good for scripting but when the system gets really big and complex C++ is the way to go. So in that respect, if you know Python and C++ both, it's great for you. Mamor, I know your experience has been mainly in automotive and aerospace industries. So can we say there is a high demand for robotics engineers in this uh, in these two industries? Yeah, automotive is actually quite a lot of application of robotics because it's high volume manufacturing and you have so much application of robotics. Same goes about any high volume manufacturing, actually it has a lot of automation, uh, automation systems and aerospace. Yeah, like NASA also has like articulated robots, like humanoid robot, like Robonaut, and that's based in Johnson Space Center. They have the research over there. 